Okay, I've uh, demonstrated that uh, vortex magnetics are not only a theory but a reality through countless demonstrations. The ferro cell, I've uh, shown inverse uh, clockwise and counterclockwise uh, spin, phase disparity at a ratio of 1 to 5 with uh, rarefaction along the North Pole and compression on the South Pole, which is why seeds germinate and sprout differently. I mean, any idiot on Earth can duplicate this experiment over and over and over again. If you have a magnet and a television set, and uh, you project a, uh, a graph pattern onto the television set, a regular old tube television set, you can actually see inverse uh, centrifugal and center. I've got tons of videos on that already. So let's show you something else here. I just have a two millimeter, God this is hard to get off, two millimeter sphere neodymium magnet here and obviously I have a dielectric reflector, a pair of copper plates here, and underneath that I've uh, got a gigantic monster magnet and uh, I don't know if many of you people have actually seen this. By the way, there's no such thing as superconductivity. Everything in the universe works off of permeability, permittivity, capacitance, and resistance. The uh, activity that actually goes on here, these, these plates are actually very heavy. Very heavy copper plates. But the, what actually goes on here is incredibly low magnetic permeability. These are just two sheets of thick copper that are taped together. This is low, low magnetic permeability. That which you call superconductivity is nothing other than a far, far better version of this, which is insanely low magnetic permeability. That is what so-called superconductivity is, but that's not what this video is about. I'm going to show you something unique that you've never seen before. Now take a look at this pattern. We have two patterns here. One's a perfect circle, one as close as I could draw it really, and another one is a curved linear curve. Now I can demonstrate to you without me knowing which pole this magnet is simply by actually spinning this uh, tiny neodymium magnet over top of this magnet. Since there is an actual vortex on each and every side of every magnet on Earth, it doesn't have to be a big magnet, it's just easier to demonstrate with a big magnet, I can prove to you by simplex motion alone what pole this magnet is that's facing up. You know, is this the North Pole or is this the South Pole? Okay, let's find out. Now if you pull the drain, pull the plug on a large drain of water, and uh, what's the easiest motion to move against or with? Well, unlike water going down the drain, uh, everything works off pressure mediation, of course. Uh, inverse centripetal convergence is the lowest path of resistance. Mother Nature doesn't use math. She only understands pressure. Uh, force and motion and inertia and acceleration. So let's place this copper plate over top of here. Let's place our neodymium ball magnet right here on top. And uh, let's uh, rotate this, lifting it up off of the, uh, the large magnet underneath. Let's rotate the plate uh, clockwise here. Let me get good motion going. You know, other than my herky-jerky herky, uh, movements, I basically have a smooth circle here. Now, that was with the neodymium rotating, obviously, clockwise, okay? So now, let's do the inverse. No, no. What I'll get is if I were a perfect machine and are able to do this perfectly, rotating uh, this magnet in a counterclockwise fashion, the perfect pattern that you'll actually get is this uh, curved linear uh, convergence. And that's actually resistance. The circle would be perfectly like a little boat flowing down a, uh, a plug of water that's pulled on the drain, a little kid's toy boat, and you pull the, the plug on the drain in the bathtub, the little boat starts spinning down and around with the pressures. But however, in magnetics, it works inverse. In this case, with the magnetic flow, the boat would actually flow opposite to the direction of movement, simplex pressure mediation. So let's take a look here again. 
clockwise, counterclockwise. Whoops. Let me get my motion going here smoothly. You see the difference? If I rotate the magnet counterclockwise to this face of the magnet, I basically get this pattern, kind of like uh, something falling. Now, this is how gravity works. Okay, gravity is location specific, it is medium specific, and it is vector specific. Okay? Um, as I've told you, there's no such thing as an autonomous field modality known as gravity. Dielectric uh, acceleration, i.e. gravity, or what you call magnetic attraction, they're all one and the same thing. The only thing that differentiates the two is coherency. Using this dielectric reflector, i.e. copper plating, okay, let me see if I can actually get my... That's the... Now, see, what is happening... Now let's examine this and see if I'm right, because I have no idea yet. I have not tested this magnet with a field finder yet. I could have cheated, but I didn't. I have no idea whether this is a north pole or south pole. Well, I do now. Why do I do now know? Okay, moving in a clockwise manner, I get a perfect circle. If I'm able to hold it perfectly robotically as I'm actually turning it. Moving the small sphere magnet counterclockwise, I get this motion. So, in this direction, I'm moving same as the pressure mediation on this magnet, moving counterclockwise. So, if I know I'm moving the same, that means that the pressure mediation on this side of the magnet is moving centripetal convergence, not centrifugal divergence. Centripetal convergence here, since I'm using a magnet ball, not a, not a steel ball, that I'm looking at the north face of a magnet here. So let's see if that's the truth. Here we have a magnetic field finder. It will always point inverse to whatever is here. So you see, I've, yeah, that's correct. I have the green end, or what would be the blue end, depends on which uh, color magnet, pointing here, which means that this is the north pole of the magnet. So I'm correct. This will always point inverse to so whatever. If the south pole is pointing here, this means this is the north pole of the magnet, which I've already showed you. Vortex field theory is the future. It is the future. Vort if you want to do a Google search, type in vortex uh, communications, type in vortex signal transmission, type in vortex anything. The math that will define the future, that will even make fiber optics look like Stone Age AOL dial-up, is going to be vortex light transmission. A buddy of mine, Tim Vandarelli, has already invented that device, the EDU. Uses vortex transmission by using electromagnet to literally spin light into a vortex. It is going to make future communications look so fast, everything that we're doing now is going to look like Stone Age uh, plug in the telephone jack dial up by comparison. Most people have actually never seen this copper plates falling, so to say on a giant magnet like this. So these are heavy copper plates. But on top of a magnet, it's a dielectric reflector. Low magnetic permeability. This is copper. Means it's a dielectric reflector. Means this is dielectric and it reflects magnetic permeability. In other words, it doesn't like magnetism. It is not very permeable. A sponge is permeable, right? Sponge is permeable, okay? You understand that? Permeability. This is a anti-sponge for magnetic permeability. Do you see this? Doesn't want to fall on the magnet. So, we've dem I've demonstrated now for God knows how many upteenth time that on the side of each and every magnet is a vortex. It's undeniable. It's irrefutable. There you're not going to find this in any book on physics. Do you think that modern physics knows the answers to everything? They sure as hell don't. They have their heads up their asses. The only thing that modern science and physics worldwide does is parrot the crap that they were taught by the idiots before them. This, folks, is the definition of academia. If anybody wants a true, accurate, and wise description of what academia is, 
I'll tell you exactly what academia is. Academia is one asshole parroting what another parrot before him was told to parrot. Say this. Okay, I'll say that. Say this. Okay, I'll say that. That is academia. That's 99% of academia. Let's not say all of it, but let's just say about all of it. Yes. On the side of each and every magnet is a vortex, because that's the only way Mother Nature works. A vortex. Field coherency. Before this was turned into a monster magnet, this was nothing but a lifeless, heavy hunk of freaking neodymium, iron, boron, ceramic, chrome-plated. Actually, I think this is nickel-plated. What defines this now as a magnet prior to it becoming a monster magnet is one thing only, and it is not quantitative. It is qualitative. Do you understand nothing else? Understand that. Qualitative. Pre-magnet, it's a, lump, a, a giant lump of nothing. After it's turned into a magnet, it's exactly the same. It's got the same weight, the same specific gravity. It's got everything. It's exactly the same. The only thing that changed? Quality. Coherency. Field coherency. The molecular structure of all the uh, molecules that are making up this neodymium iron boron are working in unison. Instead of like a bunch of uh, atom, millions and million billions of atoms, one person over here is going, ha, oh, the other person over here is going, ha, oh, oh, yeah. Everybody is singing in unison in geromagnetic ah, oh, coherency. Why don't people understand what coherency means? What's the difference between a light and a laser? Coherency. Five watt laser, burn a hole in your ass. Five watt light bulb is useless. Can't even read a book by a 5 watt light bulb. I can't even remember the last time I saw a 5 watt light bulb. I know they exist. They're useless. Christmas tree light, I think, is even more than 5 watts. You whip out a 5 watt laser, then you'll burn a hole in someone's ass from across the street. Through your window. Coherency. Coherency. Entire universe works on four principles. Ultimately, two. Force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. There is no such bullshit as superconductivity. Superconductivity is nothing other than a more impressive version of this. This is incredibly low magnetic permeability. That which we call superconductivity is not superconductivity at all. It is incredibly low magnetic permeability. When you make something super chilled, Dielectric capacitance goes and magnetic permeability goes woo. The universe is that simple. Mother Nature is not a bitch with a calculator. She doesn't do math. She does not do math. She never has done math. She only understands one thing, pressures. Pressures. Centrifugal divergence, centripetal convergence. Pressure. Okay. I've shown you with perfect clarity, repeatable by any moron on this earth, using a magnet and a dielectric reflector, i.e. a sheet of copper, the vortex that exists on the side of the magnet. I've shown you other demonstrations of the vortex on a magnet, using television sets, using a ferro cell, using all sorts of different methodologies to show you what do you think is going on here? I'm just holding up a simple... Uh, LED with the wire on the end of it. You see as I'm spinning my hand in a, a counterclockwise fashion, do you actually see the vortex of this wire? How it's actually spinning? Not relative to my hand motion. Forget about my hand. I'm just moving it around on the magnet. There isn't actually a vortex here. A field pressure vortex, no different than the, the water flowing down your damn bathtub when you pull the drain. Vortex. Yes. Folks, the entire universe is vortexes. Okay, thanks for watching. You saw it here first uh, regarding me uh, being able to show you the uh, direction of uh, motion. Here I have inverse spin motion as drawn out by the magnet. Here I have likewise spin motion. I have a curve.
a curl, actually. So, I was able to prove to you that this is the north side of the magnet, and I was correct. So, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.